Little Women is kind of a blueprint for how to have a healthy family. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love movies. My name is Alan Seawright. I am an unlicensed filmmaker, and I really need therapy. And most of that burden has fallen on you. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Megan Seawright. I'm his wife, but I'm also one of the writers and producers on Cinema Therapy. I just usually stay off camera. Anytime it's insightful or funny, it came from her. <laughs> Yes, Anytime exactly. you, you clicked away, it was because... We were vamping. <laughs> <laughs> Bad combo. Uh, so, Megan, we're here today to talk about a movie that changed you, right? So what did you choose for us today? So I chose Little Women. Um, we decided to talk about the new version, although I grew up watching the Winona Ryder Christian Bale one all the time. Are you shocked? Very. So Little Women, uh, kind of a personal story for you. So I come from a family of four daughters, just like the March family and Little Women. I'm the second of four. I very much related to Jo growing up. She is a writer and a teacher, and I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a writer and a teacher. I'd like to open a school. We never had a proper school, and now there are women's colleges opening. There should be a school. Just a lot of ways that I can relate to them. The relationship and dynamics with the family is just something that is is very real to my life. Doug, I can't get it out! <laughs> Stop it, Joe! I can't get it out! Let me... Very real. <laughs> so what so what so which of the male love interests would you be in the story, Alan? Oh, I'm clearly Laurie. Fred Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen. I am all over the place and kind of a dilettante. <laughs> so I married the wrong person? Yes. Or you should have married my little sister? Hopefully you, no. weren't, you weren't leering at the entire family, though, the way he was, right? He just... And never mind, don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We're all going to need therapy after oh, this. Oh, man. This is... I was touching, touching nerves I didn't mean to touch. <laughs> oh. So we met when, uh, when we were in college... And we'd been dating for a while, and all of Megan's sisters came to her small college apartment, and it was it was this. It was, it was just this. It was the noise and the like, people talking all over each other and like just craziness and insanity. That is, you know, a I mean, not a huge family, but a large family, and sisters who love each other and and are in each other's lives and stuff. And I grew up in a very quiet house. We would read books. So it was a lot. Quietly. It was, it was, it's just that warm, happy, loud chaos of when the whole family gets together. So you relate to it. It's like your family. It's like your story. What about it thematically speaks to you? I mean, we'll, we'll dive deep on that in just a minute, but like, can you give us a little skim across the top why it matters so much to you? Sure. Um, I very much admire Joe's passion and ambition, especially when it comes to following her dreams and being a writer. Well, I'm no Shakespeare. Thank goodness we already have him. If you know so much about it, then why don't you just do it yourself? It's something that really inspires me. I don't know as though I'm that same level of, you know, follow your dreams passionate type person. No one will forget Joe March. But it's very inspiring to me. And I just, I love the relationships in the movie, the, the themes of, of those relationships of um, loving people who are different from you, forgiving people when they do horrible things, mm -hmm. and just that family is more important than than those other things. That those relationships are more important. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at this as a family counselor, and this is a functional family. And so often dramas are centered around families that are dysfunctional. And so I, it was a treat to watch this. I mean, they have hardships, they have hard times, but they actually do healthy relationship things like forgiving, understanding stopping and calming down and trying to see things from each other's perspective. So let's dive in. Let's dive in with our first clip. You can't go, Amy, so don't be a baby and whine about it. Well, I've been shut up here and I never get to go anywhere. Beth is her piano and I'm so lonely. I can teach you chords. I don't want chords, Beth. I want to go No, to I think you'd hate to poke yourself in where you're not wanted. <laughs> we already have to deal with dull Mr. Brook. I like him. He's kind. But I can pay for myself. You will not come. I'm sorry, my sweet, but Joe's right. No! Next time. Please. Come, Meg, stop petting her. Please! I really do see a lot Please. of you in Joe. Oh, you'll be there. sorry for that, Joe Martin! <laughs> 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 I'm totally kidding. I was like, 
but just the the kind of bickering between older and younger siblings it's something that's very relatable of you know the older siblings trying to tell the younger siblings what to do and right you hurt me so i want to hurt you Has anyone taken my novel? No. no Why? <laughs> so catty. Amy, you've got it. No, I haven't. That's a lie. No, it isn't. I haven't got it. I don't know where it is, and I don't. Hey, help me! Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, wait, wait, who burnt it up? Marvin! I burnt your book. I told you I'd make you pay, and I did. <laughs> So, war memories coming up for you right now. So weirdly, me and my sisters never really fought physically, but we th there there was some screaming. I just love the hard cut in that scene. You know, it's the big fight, and then just cutting right out of it. You know, it goes into a, a bit more of an emotional beat, but just that hard cut right in the middle of yelling and screaming is always really funny to me. It never. You don't have time for it to peter out. It's just like, yep. yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> it's just that the only thing you care about is your writing. And it's not as if I could have hurt you by ruining one of your dresses and I really did want to hurt you. <laughs> so it's okay. I am the most sorry for it now. I'm so sorry. Well, and I love Joe. that that's her apology, yeah. right? It's uh -huh. like, I really wanted to hurt you. I really wanted to hurt you. Joe, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Forgive her. Help each other. Okay, pause really quick. And you're beginning. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Is that, it feels kind of platitude-y, or is that like a real, is that a useful technique for conflict resolution? It's, it's similar to in couples conflicts, like don't go to bed angry, Yeah. right? And I always heard that growing up, when you get married, don't go to bed angry. Yeah, I always heard that too. Right? And first of all, I think this this character is a fantastic mother. And the, the concept of the longer you nurse this grudge, the worse it's going to get and to practice forgiveness is good counsel. The very specific, don't let the sun go down in your anger, hmm, sometimes you absolutely want to do that. Especially like if it's late at night and everyone's tired, you really don't want to like try and resolve this now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and forcing yourself to, like we do need to forgive in order to heal, but like ma trying to make it happen, if you force it, then it's not sincere. So I, I, I like the, I like the, idea behind it. I love what she's going for. I don't think you need to never go to bed angry. Sometimes things look better in the morning. Yeah. But the idea of, you know, I'm a mother who doesn't want to see my daughters grow apart. Yeah. You know? Marmy knows that what Amy did was incredibly hurtful to Joe. She knows that it hit her exactly where it was going to hurt the most. And so she's trying to help Joe process that, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, it, coming up in the scene, you'll see that she doesn't actually forgive her right yeah. away, right? Yeah. It takes some time to to get to that point. So maybe she was able to let go a, a little bit of the anger, but she didn't forgive yet. Yeah. Well, and I wonder if I wonder if Marmy knew like it that was the best apology Amy was capable of giving. So yeah. maybe that's why she didn't lean into her. Yeah. Uh, know your kids, right? <laughs> go after her. Don't say anything till Joe has got good natured with Lori, and then just say some kind thing. I'm sure she'll be friends again. Joe! So Amy does want to make it right, to her credit. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about anger, is we always, once we calm down, we wish, we realize like, it's kind of like the Hulk, right? It's only when you calm down you see the, the path of devastation. In the moment you feel totally justified. Not safe in the middle. Got it. But realizing later that when you acted on that anger instead of being able to process what you were dealing with. Yeah. You see that it causes a lot more harm than good. Joe, get a branch. Get a branch. Well, and so this expedites the forgiveness process, right? Like it speeds it up because she realizes what's really important. But that's what Marmy's trying to get her to do earlier is realize what's really important. To understand that the relationship between her and her sister is more important than the pages that were burned or anything yeah. else. And she says, you can start again tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. That crisis moment was a realization to her that, that her sister was more important, that it wasn't worth holding that grudge, that it wasn't worth the anger that she had felt 
mm-hmm. towards her. It wasn't worth holding on to any of that because her sister was more important. She'll be fine. The doctor said he didn't even think she'd catch cold. What is wrong with me? I've made so many resolutions and I've written sad notes and I've cried over my sins, but this doesn't seem to help. When I get in a passion, I get so savage, I could hurt anyone, and I'd enjoy it. You remind me of myself. But you're never angry. I'm angry nearly every day of my life. You are? That's my secret. I'm not patient by nature. (laughs) I'm always angry. But with nearly 40 years of effort, I'm learning to not let it get the better. I'll do the same then. So there's a lot of things I love about this. Um, One is that Marmy is vulnerable. She admits her weaknesses and her faults. And I think a lot of parents, and I've been guilty of this too, you you don't want to show that you're, that you have flaws and faults as a parent, right? You want your Mm. kids to think like, you know what you're doing, right? You, You don't want your kids to know. I'm just winging it. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> right? You didn't come with a manual. But I think it's great that Marmy here is willing to open up to Joe and say, I struggle with this too, to open up and to relate to her daughter and to say, here's how I dealt with what you're dealing with. Most people that know me now think it's really funny, but I had a horrible temper when I was a kid. I like, do think that's hilarious, actually, because yeah. I don't see that. Yeah, I mean, he even, like... I still don't know if I I don't it. think he'd ever seen me get angry <laughs> until after we got married, at least, like, legitimately years, angry. Years, years after we'd been married. <laughs> um, and, you know, I get, I get excited or, you know, worked up or passionate about things, but it, it's not that same kind of rage that Joe talks about there where you just want to hurt someone. And I remember as a kid, like, starting to recognize, like, this isn't good. This isn't healthy. This is not the person I want to be. And so I just love Marmy talking through through it with Joe there of, like, you can, you can get through this. Like, mm. it's not that the feelings go away. You just learn how to manage them in a healthier way. And it's a reminder that the people that we see that seem really patient and, like, they've really got it together generally got there through a lot of work and effort. Merry Christmas, girl. If we're not careful, we could fall into a trap of, well, I'm a passionate person and I get angry and I lose my temper and that's just who I am. And so and so doesn't really have to worry about it because look at them. They don't know what it's like. And then we just see it as like they're this way and I'm this way. But the fact is, they've probably struggled with that before mm-hmm. because it's it's human yeah. Yeah. to well, get angry and, is human. And none of us know what's going on under the surface of anybody else at any given time. <laughs> well, and I love, like, Marmy throughout the whole story is just, she's calm, she's collected, she's patient, she's their rock in this family, mm-hmm. right? And yet she admits, like, I struggle with it too, but she sets the example, she models for her kids mm-hmm. how to deal with it. Yeah. When our idols are imperfect, it gives us hope. Yeah. But that's an interesting dynamic about how Greta Ger- Gerwig, like, structures the screenplay and tells the story, is we see Joe find a man and marry, and that's kind of the original story, but in this version, there's room for this to be, we are seeing the version that Joe wrote mm-hmm. for publication. Yeah. And where her publisher says, no, she needs to get married at the end, she's like, okay, well then I want... Mr. Dashwood, if I'm going to sell my heroin into marriage for money, I might as well get some of it. 6.6%. There's an interweaving of the story and then the storyteller to where at the end, we're not sure, did she actually choose love and marriage or are we just following the track of, okay, well, this whole thing this is, is the, the book she wrote. This yeah. is the book she wrote, yeah. yeah. And she may not have found that. From a filmmaking standpoint, the when we were talking about it before, you said something fascinating and I'm just gonna take credit for it right now. <laughs> uh, this film is, it's Louisa May Alcott by way of Christopher Nolan. <laughs> It's non-linear storytelling. Non-linear, completely out of order. And and the thing that is, to me, truly just stunning about the filmmaking is there are many, many, many intercuts between like the current timeline when she's a writer and then jumping back in the past. Mm-hmm. And the first two or three times, it's a little jarring. And then after that, 
there's never any like hard, this is the past, this is the present. It's all very subtle filmmaking technique and you're never lost. Yeah. It is really, really clear all the time. And it's color, it's sound, it's... Also, we're assured that we are right, We are rooting for the right couple. Because originally, like the, the way Little Women is originally told, it's a straightforward chronological story. Mm -hmm. And what happens when uh, Lori doesn't get Joe, then he moves on to the other sister, right? And that's kind of how it plays out. And, and so when she talks about, I don't want to be second fiddle, I don't want to be your fallback plan type thing. But here when we start the story, we see Amy and her affection for Lori. And how she's kind of pursuing him and there's this back and forth. Well, not she's not pursuing him, she's got another man, but she does love him. Mm -hmm. And it sets us up from the beginning to be rooting for that couple. So it doesn't feel like a bait and switch. It feels like, oh, this is just... Well, and the first man we meet with Joe is Friedrich. Good afternoon, Miss March. Oh, good afternoon. Before we meet Laurie with her. Yeah. And so it's, it, it yeah, it, it's just a really, really elegant solution to... You're on fire. Thank you. Not necessarily a storytelling problem from the novel. It strengthens I, the narrative. You, you're on fire! <laughs> <laughs> it strengthens yeah. the narrative thematically. I have the same habit, you see? I think in some ways oh. it's, it's a little bit of a letdown um, plot-wise because you know the ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's, the, you know, it kind of removes any element of surprise. Um, but most people coming into it are probably familiar with the story anyway, except for you guys. father. John stayed with him. We need to change the lens. We're going to move you, sweet girl. Oh, look at her. Hold on, it's okay. Hi. Back to the intercutting time thing, cutting between Beth's this, first illness yeah. and her second is, it's just beautifully done. The present, the colors are usually more muted, am I wrong? Muted and more blue. Yeah. Until the end when the present is, is kind of happier and then the colors become warm again, but the past tends to be more warm because they're happier memories, yeah. generally speaking. Yeah. Don't go away. Fight. Please, please just fight to the end and be loud and don't just go in and go away, Beth. Well, this comes back to Joe's difficulty with handling change. And obviously, this is on a very yeah. higher level. Like, yeah. losing a family member is, is incredibly difficult. Um, but her don't go away, it, it mirrors what she said to Meg when Meg was getting married. Yeah. And that specific plea, of Mommy. don't go quietly. Like if I'm gonna lose you, I wanna lose you as you. And you're a noisy person with a lot of life. Like if you're gonna die, go out swinging. Yeah. Like, cause if you die quietly, that's one more change. Like I'm already losing you, you know? Again, you see the color contrast there. Yeah. Once at the beginning, there's a title card that says seven years earlier. Then after that, it's all just color and subtle cues. And this time her mom turns around, but there's no, there's no one behind her. There's no happy reunion. Well, and that's such a beautiful way of showing that through the filmmaking without, you know, show don't tell, right? Well, and yeah. the number one piece of filmmaking here is Laura Dern, top three all-time on-screen criers. So their family just went through an incredibly difficult experience losing a sister, a daughter, right? Mm -hmm. And they're dealing with a lot of grief. And I love the way they come together to handle that. Well, I think, I think the whole story of Little Women, I think the reason it resonates, as I said, you know, kind of at the top of the episode, is we're looking at a functional family. Mm -hmm. You know, they get angry, they fight, they, 
they're jealous, but they also forgive and they take accountability and they show each other compassion and tenderness and they listen to each other and they'll shift their perspective, you know, and they'll make sacrifices for one another, but also draw healthy boundaries about this is what I want out of life. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful family dynamic. And so in grief, as in when one of them marries the man the other was coming around to wanting to marry as in a th- as in when their father was dying and their mom had to leave like time and time again they pull together time and time again they've got each other's back no matter what i mean that's and that is what makes a family functional is that is is threading that needle between individuality and taking care of the group I mean, I I think it's kind of a blueprint, honestly. Little Women is kind of a blueprint for how to have a healthy family. You can watch it or read it over and over and over again. Is it fairies? Santa Claus. No, it's old Aunt March. And almost everything they do on the macro level, like on the big level, is right. Right? Like, they'll have their little moments, but on the big level, everything they do is exactly what you need to do. And what makes it realistic because they're not a perfect family, is on the micro level, they screw up. Mm-hmm. Right. On the micro level, they have emotions, they have passions, they have they outbursts. They burn their sister's book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, and they, um, but, but on the macro level, like they're always going to come back to each other. And, I mean, I, I think it's a beautiful story for that reason. Well, John, that was really sweet. You know what else is sweet? Oh, gosh. Lisa's passion for popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> These are getting worse. <laughs> Not getting the popcorn. Worse. His pitches are no, getting worse. No, the popcorn's worse. getting better. This is <laughs> this is caramel. Yeah, caramel or caramel? Uh, I've heard it both ways. I've heard it both ways. But it it can be delivered anywhere in the country for your at home movie night. Lisa's passion for popcorn dot com. Mm-hmm. It's sweet like Jono. Now, other things we got, other offers we got down below. You can rent or buy Little Women using the link. You want to meet with me for a free fifteen minute consult? Link below. You can check us out on the interwebs at therapy underscore cinema on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find us on Facebook as well. So until next time, grab a branch. Just don't don't burn books. Just no. don't. Yeah, actually, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No. And, and watch movies. <laughs> My little women. Oh, you've grown. Oh, Beth. Merry Christmas, my dear. Merry Christmas to each of you. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas.